for you to uh, give me an argument about why I should not give up on the term libertarian or libertarianism. Uh, well, if you were living in any other country than America, I might actually agree with you. Um, but even still, even with the large amount of leftist infiltration in libertarian circles, I do still think that libertarianism as a whole, by the majority of the public, still represents uh, a movement that is very pro-capitalist, very pro-free markets, private property, and anti-government intervention in most sectors of life, broadly speaking. Uh, and because of that, I still think it's a label that we should hold on to. Um, I think it's important not to jump ship with labels so easily because doing so makes it really hard for people to coalesce under the same banner. You know, if, if, if the ideology of the movement that you call, you call yourself part of, if the title keeps changing all the time, it's, it's hard to get people on board because they're confused of what's it called today? Is it still mean the same thing today as it did yesterday? And what's happening? Uh, so if, just for purely logistic reasons and for continuity reasons, I don't want to really seed that battle yet. And I think that places like the Mises Institute and LouRockwell.com and people like Rothbard and Hoppe have gone a long way in really pinning down uh, what is the actual essence of libertarianism. And, you know, I think kind of throwing away the term would, in many respects, throw a lot of their work in vain, which I'm not ready to do yet. Because whenever, if we do, let's say, abandon the term, then when people go back to read Rothbard's stuff or, or Mises' stuff or Hoppe's stuff, they're going to be really confused because they're going to be appealing to this concept that no longer is public, popularly recognized as meaning what they meant it to mean, you know, which is kind of what happened to the term liberal as well. We gave that up and now we all get really confused and debate about what did Mises mean by a liberal and, and what capacity he was he a liberal and that gets really contorted and that's what leftists like to do they like to they know they can't make really good sound counter arguments so what they do instead is they try to pervert the language they don't they don't want to allow you to have fixed terms with fixed concrete definitions because that um that makes it too evident of the flaws in their positions because you can pin things down really easily. And if there's one thing a leftist hates, it's having his own position clearly defined and pinned down because once it is, it's really easy to see the flaws in it, you know? So that's kind of where I, I, I stand on that. I, I'm still willing to hold on to the term. And however, I'm also very willing to, uh, call myself an alt-right libertarian, someone who's both alt-right and libertarian. And I think amending it with these things makes it more clear uh, kind of where you stand and uh, what type of libertarian you are, right? Um, or what type of person you are, really. Not what type of libertarian, but what type of person you are and where you're coming from. So... Yeah, well, one thing that I'm pretty big about is describing uh, describing my views in terms of preferences. I, I tend to stay away from the and stuff and, and just talk about these These are my preferences. Mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I'm libertarian, the only things I think are enforceable, i.e. that can be upheld via physical force and threats, are private property rights whether in your body or in your externally owned goods. Uh, it is true that all of my, uh, everything that I, I want beyond that is a non-enforceable preference, but they are still very strong preferences. And it just so happens to be the case that a lot of the cultural preferences or cultural values, even though they're not legally enforceable, um, at least according to the libertarian theory, that doesn't mean that they aren't very real practical conditions which should be met or need to be met in order to make the implementation and sustenance of a libertarian society viable. There are still there are still other conditions outside of the philosophy of libertarian itself which need to be met in order to actually implement this ideal, this philosophy in the real world. 
And um, people need to realize it's not just about screaming the NAP and taxation is theft at the top of their lungs. It's going to do it. You need to recognize that different cultures have different levels of amenability to these ideas in the first place. And one's culture is intimately tied with his race and his background and his heritage and his language and his religion. So we can't just discount and discard all these things and pretend like everyone is equally susceptible to the ideas of libertarianism, whether they're a third world or Somalian or an Afghan, as if they're, they have the same inclination to adopt these ideas or even to understand them as a uh, British person would or an American or an Australian or a white Australian. I mean, we need to recognize there's very real differences between us, you know, and this has to do with biology and culture and that these, they need to stop making these false dichotomies that everything's just environment, everything's or everything's just nature.